Welcome back everybody, we're at day 12. Yeah, I know, it's hard to believe we're halfway through the advent already. Hope you've enjoyed all the daily vlogs up till now. It's starting to get a little bit more festive now. Once I've opened box 12, we'll get going and I've got a lovely little um, Christmas craft fair, if you like, a uh, little indoor event. Uh, there may be some faces you recognize, but you have to stay tuned. So let's get box 12 underway and I'll get myself on my way. Here goes. Oh, box 12, what delights do you hold? Wow, that looks familiar. Well, I suppose you need a matching pair. We have a candle in the form of a beautiful gold Christmas tree. So here we go. We're amassing some goodies now. That table setting is gonna look amazing. Just up here on the left, on the side of the road, is some game birds, and I think they're a pheasant, male and female. Wow, they're quite tame. How lovely is that? A pair of partridges? Where's the pear tree? A bit of paper around him. Right, let's get going. I'm gonna be late. Good luck. So I've just arrived, and look who's here. Hello. Hi. Nice <laughs> meeting you here. Yeah, we arrived. Two minutes, minutes ago. ago yeah. That's great. Yeah. Right, so we're going to have a look, see what yeah. it's all about. Let's have a look together. Walk this way. Hello. Hello. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> Heading to you, Luna. <laughs> <laughs> little catnip mouse. Yeah, little catnip mouse. That's unusual. Yeah. spray. Ah. We like just it, we're turning it. Yeah. That's coming home with me, this one. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice, yeah. Nice. Bottles. Yeah, that's what we used to have milk in. Yeah. These are advertising. Oh, well, they put like the ads on the milk yeah. bottles. They're lovely, that. Yeah, I'll say I remember those showing me age, didn't I? Yeah, 70s. <laughs> old-fashioned hair dryer. now which is a medieval chateau it's about 15 minutes down the road so well worth a look even though it's pouring down I'll do my best but it's well worth it see you there yes I am mad 
I'm walking about in it now. Better watch where I'm walking. This is just the perimeter of the chateau and shortly I'll be walking round to show you the entrance. How many vloggers risk life and limb to bring you this sort of entertainment? <laughs> but you can't let a little bit of weather put you off. Amazing. I wouldn't fancy anyone's chances trying to scale those walls and having things hurtled at you. Should have worn me wellies. Anyway, at least there's not too many people about at the moment, so filming should be a little bit easier. Now this moat that surrounds the chateau, they actually harness the power of this and just round by the entrance, which I'll be showing you shortly, is where the mill is and there's a series of lots of stone wheels in there so it sort of powered all of their you know their grinding and everything they needed from a mill. Let's go and take a look. I'm just walking in the medieval courtyard. Normally this would be absolutely chock-a-block with people but because of the weather it's only me and one other vlogger out I think that's just vlogged me so yeah another mad person but yeah it's a, a real destination hotspot for people that like chateaus and French culture. Right we're just coming up to the entrance. Lots of little eateries dotted about somewhere where you can get a galette. Looks like most of them are shut today though. The mind boggles as to what stories and events these walls have seen over the last thousand years. Well the rain stopped and I've got the place all to myself. There's nobody else around. I am just awaiting the arrival of Jasmine and Jack. Right the sun's out and guess what? Jasmine and Jack are out as well. They've brought the sun with them. We've got this place all to ourselves. A minute ago there yep. was not a soul about. No. It was really it really was, lovely. It was raining a minute ago though, wasn't it? So Hellstones there yeah. a minute ago, yeah, so I took shelter. Yeah, We've got our raincoats on just in case it comes back. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I don't learn when I get wet. So we're going to try and find somewhere to have a nice coffee, warm up a little bit. Have and a then, bit of a walk around? Yeah, we'll have a walk around up the top there. It's some stunning, stunning views from up the top there. It's absolutely breathtaking up there. There's a lovely little uh, walkway with the church as well yeah. that le would have led down to the, uh, the chateau. So, yeah, let's right. have a look while the sun's out. Let's go, yeah, make hay while the sun shines. Lovely little creperie and it's very Breton. Yeah, we've got our cider in our little it's called bully. And they're like mugs which you drink your cider out of, and they're normally accompanied by a galette, which is like a pancake, but very, very flat, made with buckwheat. And it's normally got savoury things in, so it's like a lunchtime sort of meal, isn't it? We're gonna try that now. So that was very nice. Jack treated us to galette and chips and a cider. Thank you very much, Jack. Very Breton. So these are the lovely chateau grounds. There's gardens. And I think the fortress runs all the way around the town, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the fortified town. A little bit bright here. <laughs> So we're now inside the chateau, we're going to give you a tour, there's loads to see, it's a little bit windy but we do our best. 
It's absolutely fabulous in here. Let's go and do some exploring. here lovely arrow slit where you could watch your invaders come there's a news of history right in front of your eyes lovely stonework So I think this area behind me, on pillars, was a raised deck, I believe. Maybe a market underneath, so like a closed in market. I would have loved this as a boy with me knights on it. Well, what we have here, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, is a, well. is a well, and it's very deep. A well was very important, and these fortified chateaus, when they was in sieges for a long time, they had their own water supply, which is important, couldn't be contaminated. And there you'd add a, a rope with a big bucket on it. Yeah, very, very important thing. That's one of the reasons why the, this Fougere one was so successful. successful because just behind the castle there's a natural water source yep. at height as well which is quite rare for it to be on it well this castle is actually set in a valley yeah mm. because of the water supply yeah. which is rare for a fortified castle to be yeah. in a valley normally on top yeah. of a hill but because of the water they can use it for energy to power their power their mills mills for flour yeah just a constant water supply as well so we're just going to go up to that intriguing building up there. It's quite unusual actually, there's a few different styles going on there, so let's go and have a look. Right, now I need to explain, if you can zoom in on these pieces here. Now whenever you've got a crack in an old building, sometimes what they do is put pieces of metal across and the marks in the middle measure the width of the uh, crack to see whether it's moving or whether it's ah. settled. Sometimes they um, glue uh, glass strips across on something like this, they've used metal and used markers. So they can gauge if the, if the building's still moving. Yeah. There's subsidence. Yeah, because you can see here there's a big crack, isn't there? Yeah. Once the all rain the gets up. in the top, it washes all the mortar out of the gaps and that's when you start getting problems. You can see uh, how it has moved a bit as well. Yeah. Another one there. And this opening here, you've had a series of bars going through there, heavily fortified. No one was going to climb through there. No. Oh. And then this comes out onto this amazing view. Yes. I think it's one of the oldest, completest, you know, chateaus. There's yeah. probably probably some literature on it on the way up. It's either the biggest or the oldest. I think it's the biggest in Europe. It's still standing. Yeah. A trebuchet down there. Wow. Could have been used for yeah. launching. Launching missiles, stones, rocks. So I reckon they use that catapult to get the window cleaners up there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we have here is not a giant game of marbles, but this was for those catapults outside. Yeah. Definitely. That one's got a cross on it. This one's metal, the rest of stone. Would they have used stone ones or would they have just been metal? 
a bit of both. It depends on the era. All oh, right. So back in the Middle Ages, the streets and towns around this particular chateau were famous for making pictures. Not square pictures, for walls. Jugs. Jugs, pouring pictures. And I think the street name was Pints, P-I-N-T-E-S or something like that. just got a picture the atmosphere that would have been like here back in the day knights on horses and fighting it would have been so busy here So another interesting little fact and detail on these round towers, that little window there with the very angled outlet, that is for an it's for a toilet. It's the it's the way they got rid of everything inside. It just literally shot straight outside. Now these larger holes that you see, they wasn't for arrow slits like for arrows, they were for cannon. And that's why the shape's round. And it's got a slit in the top, so is it also for arrows if needed? And maybe if you shove, shove the cannon in there, you'd need to see as well. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. So that'd be like your sight. That's it for today's little mini adventure around the beautiful Fougere Chateau. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and comment down below if you did. Uh, and don't forget to share it with a friend. We'd like to grow the channel and everything helps. Alright, see you next time. Bye for now.